Hello guys, this is the first video in Linux command series. We will see the most widely used commands in Linux. In this video, we will cover the mentioned 10 commands. So without any further delay, let's start. Now to demonstrate all those commands, I will be using the Linux distribution which I have installed using Windows subsystem for Linux. So for that, you can open Windows Terminal. And from here itself, you can choose the Linux distribution which is installed. So for me, I have installed Ubuntu 20.04. So I will click on this and it will open a prompt for me which will be uh, Ubuntu prompt. Now you can see uh, I am into Ubuntu now. Let me go to the home directory. Now I am in home directory and uh, let's start with our first command. The first command was pwd. So the pwd command is simple as it can get. Its primary output is to print the active directory commencing from the root directory itself. It is an acronym and stands for print working directory. The pwd command will print the full system path of the current directory. So let's type pwd and press enter. So from root uh, currently I am in my user uh, directory. So it has printed the full path starting from root. This command is very useful in the shell scripting as well. In the scripts itself, we can execute this command to identify the current working directory of the script. Next is cd command. The cd command is one of the most commonly used command. It, it, it is one of the basic commands used in Linux. The primary purpose of command is to change the directory. As it is stated from the name, it is cd. That means change directory. Now suppose I have a my DIR directory inside my current working directory. So I want to go inside that directory. So using cd command I can do that cd and after that I need to type the directory in which I want to go. If I press enter you can see the prompt has also changed and if I want to see whether I am inside my uh, change directory or not I can make use of pwd command and you can see now my present working directory is home avandeep and my dir. Next command is alias. So uh, this command actually is an amazing way to personalize and organize your commands. It allows you to designate a name to a single command or even a string of commands as well. Now suppose I want to give a short name to my pwd command as using alias. So what I need to do, I need to type alias and space and the short name that I want to do. Suppose I want to uh, give the functionality of pwd to p. So what I will do p is equal to pwd and that's it. So now I don't have to write pwd to check the current working directory. I can write p and press enter and you can see it can it is acting same as pwd. This can be very useful if we have some long uh, commands or long string that we need to remember. We can store them or give them aliases uh, with the short names so that we can use them appropriately. It can become very handy. Next is cat command. The cat command is very simple and one of the most frequently used commands that are used in a variety of ways also. It is a short of concatenate and permits user to create files, redirect output, list the content of file or even concatenate multiple files. Now suppose I have a file inside this directory and I want to see or list its contents. So what I will do cat and then file name. After that, uh, what is the file name? So file names.txt is there. So what I will do cat and name of the file and press enter. It will display what all contents are inside that specific file. I can also create files using this. So how it can be done type cat. I need to type cat. And after that, I want to like uh, add a new file. So let me name it new.txt and press enter. So now the prompt will ask me to enter the strings or uh, whatever text I want to store in the new.txt. So I will type hello, aman, exit. And now how to store it, how to stop this and uh, store this data to uh, the new.txt. For that, the shortcut is control Z. So if you press control Z, it will stop that and content whatever I have typed will be copied to the new.txt. Now let's verify those contents. So as you can see, all those contents are added to new.txt. Next is df command. The df is a fundamental command to Linux. Using df, 
we can display the size available space and use space on the file system of the device. So we let's just type df and press enter and we can see all the mounted iron and all the file systems with their used and available spaces. But this information may not be much useful because we can see a long numbers there. Now how to make it human readable. So for that we can use its options df hyphen h. So now it will be more clear and understandable to the human format that this is the size given in GBs and MBs also. The next command we will be discussing is chmod. So it allows user to alter or assign the permission flags on a file or folder. The permission will define who can read, write or execute the file. So let me just list down the files present in this folder. So we have these three files and these components uh, I was talking about read, write, execute. So there are three flags. Uh, first one, uh, if you see this section in the Linux terminal, the first flag itself, it will tell you whether it's a file, it's a soft link or it's a directory. The next three uh, flags will tell read, write and execute permission for the owner. The next three will tell the same permissions for the group under which uh, the owner falls. And the last three will tell you the same read, write, execute permission flags for the other users, which are neither owner nor a uh, part of the owner. These read, write, execute permissions are assigned a number. In total, they become as seven, where we have number four assigned for read, two for write and one for execute. So suppose if uh, I want to assign user a permission of only read and execute. So I will add up those two read is four execute is one. So five will be given in that. And similarly using other combinations based on the requirement, we can change its permission. If we give zero, then that means none of the permissions will be applied. Now let's take an example. So for the file names.txt file, I only want the owner should be able to read, write, execute, but the group and other users should not be able to take any action. So in this case, our chmod command will become chmod7 for the owner because it requires all the permissions, zero for group and zero for the other user. And after that, we need to provide the file name. So if it is executed successfully, we can check. Now on the first file itself, you can see only the owner has read, write, execute and none of the other user will be able to perform any action on this file. Now suppose we want the group users as well to have a read and execute permission. So what will be the command? CH mode 7 for the owner, 5 for the group. Why? Because 4 for reading and 1 for executing. That is 4 plus 1, 5 and still 0 for the others. And after that, the file name. And if you see now, uh, these first three flags are for owner and these next three flags are for uh, the group, which is having read and execute. So using uh, ch mode command, we can control the access of files. The next command is diff command. So this command will compare between the two text files and display the differences. Now suppose I want to check the differences between these two text file, file names and file names too. So what I will do diff then uh, name of the first file and then name of the second file. By default it will display me output in this format but if I want to see the output uh, like in parallel in the columns then I can use hyphen y. So now you can see on the left hand side it is giving me output of file names. On the right hand side it is giving me output of file names too and comparing it line by line. Next command is the ch own command allows user to change the owner and group detail of a particular file. As I do not have any other user on my system as of now so I can show you the um, syntax it will be ch o w n and then new user colon uh, new group it can be old group also and after that file name so it can be anything so with this the ownership of this specific file file names or txt will be transferred to the new user and new user group so as of now if i press enter it will tell me that uh, invalid username but if you see currently uh, this file belongs to amandeep user in the group amandeep itself so if we have multiple groups and multiple users uh, on a specific system and I we want to manage the ownership accordingly, so we can use chown command.
नेक्स्ट इज एक्ो कमांड द एक्ो कमांड इज यूज टू प्रिंट स्ट्रिंग और टेक्स्ट पास एज एन आर्ग्यूमेंट टू द टर्मिनल विंडो इट कम्स एज द बिल्ट इन कमांड सो लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल इट विल बी एक्ो सो वट एवर आई पास हेयर इट विल प्रिंट दैट सेम थिंग टू द कंसोल यू कैन सी इट कैन ऑल्सो बी यूज टू प्रिंट द इन्वायरमेंट वेरिएबल डिटेल्स सो सपोज वी वॉन्ट टू यूज द यूजर डिटेल्स सो वट आई विल डू I will print echo user. So now it has, you can see, printed my username here on the console. Similarly, we can print some uh, other environment variables as well, like we have home, and uh, one more variable which is you widely used, which is path. So you can see all those environment variable details we are able to access using echo command. The last command we will be discussing is the exit command. The exit is most basic command of all. All it does is exit the shell in which it is currently active and close the terminal. If you are in the only running shell, and then it will log out and uh, close the SSH remote connection as well. So currently, if you see, I am in the last shell itself. If I type exit, it will close the uh, connection and uh, logs me out. Now, uh, to test the exit command, let's move inside another uh, shell itself. So what I will do, I will type bash. Now I haven't moved to another shell, shell inside the shell. So now if I type exit, it will exit from the currently running shell and move me back to the main shell itself. If the return value is zero, then the script or the program executed without errors. If it is non-zero, that means there can be some errors uh, while executing the specific command or process. Yeah, that is it for this video. We will see more commands in our uh, next tutorial videos. So if you like the video and have some suggestions, please do subscribe to the channel and uh, put your comments in the video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.